Hey all, this is truly scary stuff. Have you ever been concerned that maybe someone's watching your online activities? Maybe they know what videos you watch. Maybe they know what sites you browse. In fact, that has become a very possible reality. There is a security loophole that's called snail load. And what snail load enables hackers to do is to literally watch everything that you do online with 93% accuracy on the videos you watch and 63% accuracy knowing every website you visit and everything you do digitally online. Scary stuff, right? Um, the good news is, and we always talk about this as do other folks that you know educate you on scams, if you don't click a malicious link, if you don't open a PDF file, whatever it may look like, from someone you don't know, you're going to stay safe and not be vulnerable. But in the off chance that you did, um, the snail load exploit comes directly from the hacker's server. And it's a very slow loading file, hence the name snail load. And what they're doing is they're testing the internet speed of your system. And they're finding out those patterns so that they can later be exploited. And right on cue as I'm recording this video, I received this email in my inbox. Very clearly a phishing attempt. How do I know? Take a look at their address up here. It's supposedly coming from Microsoft Office Billing, right? But you can see the email address is nothing like Microsoft.com. That is your first cue, right? And sometimes they're very good at spoofing these email addresses, but because they can't use Microsoft, because it's going to direct you to an actual Microsoft account, unless they've hacked that uh, email account already, it's going to be Microsoft, and instead of an O, it's going to be a zero, looking like Microsoft. But this scammer didn't even make the effort, right? Look at the email address, email.nti.phasa.br so likely coming from Brazil. And this is a invoice payment PDF. Now I guarantee you if I open that email, something malicious is going to occur. May or may not be the snail load attack, but I'm not gonna take the chance. Now that we know about the exploit, how do you know if your system may have been hacked? There's actually seven things you can look out for. Let's go through each of them one by one. Number one, have new programs been installed on your computer unknowingly? In Windows, in the search bar, type apps and features, open and check the install dates. On Mac, click the finder and look at the date modified. If after following the steps I just outlined, you notice a program you don't recognize and you don't think you installed, especially if it was done so recently and is in conjunction with some of the other things we'll talk about in just a moment, be sure to delete it and go into your trash folder and make sure you double delete it. Make sure it's off your system. Number two, check your spam folder, check your sent folder. And if there are messages being sent out on your behalf that you definitely didn't send, that is an additional indicator that a hacker may have control over some or all of your system. So how do you protect yourself if you identify spam emails being sent out from your account on your behalf without your knowledge? Number one, set up two-factor authentication. Number two, there are anti-spam software solutions. Perhaps your virus software program you already subscribed to, perhaps it does offer these features. Be sure that you activate them. Number three, as with everything scam related, it's important to be educated on the risk and what to do to prevent that risk. Number three, identify if there's been an increase in network activity. Your network provider should be monitoring activity in real time for you. All you have to do is log into the app or visit their website. There should be real time detailing. And if you're seeing an increase in activity, especially during times that we'll talk about in just a minute, that may be an indicator that someone's utilizing your system off hours. And by off hours, if they're in your system already, they know when you work, they know when you don't. If you're, you know, traditional eight to five, nine to five, then in the evenings, you're likely not on your computer and you may not notice um, that, you know, there's activity occurring, but maybe you're watching Netflix and the 
uh, buffering kicks in. Maybe that's an indicator. Definitely if there's overnight activity that you did not initiate, that could be an indicator that a hacker has access to your system. While firewalls help restrict access to your network, they can't prevent human error. Be alert when unknown programs request access to features on your computer. In all cases, deny that access. And oh, by the way, train your family who you know, are on your network as well, train your family to spot these signs, to know when there's potentially a malicious request from a program. Number five, when security programs or firewalls have been uninstalled from your system, that is a clear indicator that there's a threat actor at play in your network and on your system. In Windows systems, go into Windows security and look at network and firewall protection and make sure Windows Defender firewall is active. In Mac systems, go into settings, network, and make sure your firewall is active. If your browser home page is unexpectedly changed, that could be an indicator that a hacker has access to your system. If you spot a change to your home page that you definitely didn't make, reset to defaults. The way that you do that is go into your browser, click more or the three dots that are on the right hand side, depending on which browser you use, go into advanced settings and choose restore to defaults and see if it changes back again. Keep a close eye on it. And finally, if you notice movement on your computer, maybe your mouse is moving, maybe programs are opening or closing, and you're not doing it, that is a very clear indicator there may be a hacker at play. There are now cybercrime as a service product, and for as little as $20 a month, hackers or aspiring cybercriminals can access these tools, making it so much easier and so much harder to detect when they're employing these hacking attacks. I highlight that in the episode that uh, I've linked to this one, and I encourage you to watch it because it tells you how simple and easy it is for cyber criminals to do what they do. My name is Philip Macko. I'm the host of the Muddy Waters podcast and YouTube series. I want to thank you for tuning in. I hope you got something from this episode. I hope that you're going to check those seven steps that I've outlined. If you haven't done so already, please click the thumbs up button. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Please share this with friends. The goal of the Muddy Waters podcast and YouTube series is just to help you stay safe. And we do that through knowledge. And knowledge is power, and knowledge keeps us safe. So thank you again for tuning in. I hope you'll join me on my next episode. Have an excellent day.